Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Slim. If you're new here, welcome. This is a lifestyle channel that has to do with almost everything you can imagine. I go over and discuss. Um, so this is a vlog type of video. And this video is going to be centered around the art of relationship. And when I say relationship, I mean, okay, like intimate relationships. So I just felt really called to make this video because relationships have been a big part of my life and a big part of my experience. And I've helped many people, including myself, um, in my personal romantic relationships. And so I wanted to make this video centered around relationship killers that we do realize and sometimes we don't realize that will kill our relationships and set them up for disaster. So I wanted to go over them because the whole point of being in a relationship is to be happy and to be respected and to be loved and to be fulfilled by whoever it is that you're with. So, and of course, coming into the relationship, you want to supply that for yourself and not come with an empty cup. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that, um, you know, you want to come full and you want to come correct. So this is 21 relationship killers. And there's actually a little bit more than 21. So we're going to start off with the first one is lie. People aren't perfect, clearly, you know, um, we're perfectly imperfect. And so there are times where we may lie. The only reason why people may lie is because they are literally doing something they have no business doing. They want their cake and eat it too, or they're just so afraid. There could be, there's just so many reasons, but don't lie. It's a relationship killer. If you fucking lie, do not lie to your partner. It shows that you do not respect them. It shows that you don't care to tell them the truth about yourself or about a matter or about a happening. It just shows disrespect. So do not lie to the person that you say that you love. That is the number one relationship killer on the list here. So don't lie. <laughs> number two, I put talk to people outside the relationship. You have no business. So when it comes to relationships, you realize, oh my gosh, I'm in this situation. There's going to be things that come up and show up within ourselves and within the other person and together as a couple. So many times, certain situations will have one or the other partner go outside of the relationship and talk to an outsider that is the opposite sex. So let's say I'm having problems in my relationship and I go talk to Steven let's just say. Um, I have no business talking to Steven because if I have a problem with my mate or my boyfriend or my husband, whoever I'm with, I need to talk it over with them. And me going to Steven just lets Steven know that the door is open for him to slide on through if he, if he wants to, if he's that type of person. And it's just not freaking cool. It's a relationship killer because once my dude finds out or vice versa, then they're not going to trust you and they're going to feel like you're up to no good, which you are because you are in a weak space. And instead of talking it over with your partner or a friend, you are literally going to the opposite sex, like crying for help. And that's just like, you're setting yourself up to get fucked up, you know, in the end, because it's like, you're going to either end up doing something that you regret, or you're just allowing people to be in your fucking business that don't need to be. So don't go outside the relationship if you have problems to keep it, you know, don't go to the opposite sex, I should say. Of course, you can go to your people who you trust, but like, don't go hit up another girl or another guy just because you're having problems with your, your person. It's fucking ridiculous and disrespectful and it's a relationship killer. Number two. Number three, playing with fire and entertaining. So I say that because so many times um, in relationships we take each other for granted or we forget like what we got or we're just not being mindful. It could be like so many different reasons. And so we start playing with fire and we start entertaining other people of the opposite sex and we don't even realize it. That could be like in Facebook Messenger, that could be like entertaining the waitress, that could be like entertaining a bitch at work or a dude or 
you know, a coworker, um, a friend, you know, just being disrespectful and entertaining them in a way that's making your partner feel uncomfortable. So do not entertain other people when you are supposed to be with your person that you love and claim that you're with in your relationship. Don't entertain other people in that way, on that level, that's going to make your partner feel some type of way about it. And that's also going to show the outsider that you don't really respect and take your relationship seriously. And you're not really into the person that you say that you're with. So, you know, because if you were, then why the fuck are you entertaining them? So don't entertain and don't play with fire because you will get burnt and then you will lose what you have. Beyonce, if I were a boy song, check it out. Anyways, relationship killer, remaining an ego, which is nothing but edging God out and being selfish and appreciating oh okay and not appreciating their place in your life so if you are going through some troubles and things like that and if you solely remain in your ego it's like you will never see the brighter picture of the circumstance you will never see the truth because ego is nothing but fear ego is nothing but edging God out and like not seeing stuff for what it truly is Ego is being selfish. Ego is being entitled. Ego is not your amigo. And ego is something that will kill your relationship. So when it comes to matters of your relationship, matters of the heart, get your fucking ego out of it, okay? Like, of course, we all want people to know that we're strong and we're bold, but it's like there's a way of going about it. And having your ego a part of that is not going to help your relationship succeed. And also that includes being selfish and not appreciating their place in your life so you know you really want to make sure that you are not being selfish and that you are appreciative because you don't know what you got until it's gone and then that will suck so check your ego the next one is taking your partner for granted by not listening and appreciating their place oh that was along with this one so basically taking your partner for granted by not least by not listening it is so crucial that you listen to your partner it just shows respect it just shows that you care and it shows that you want to listen to understand them when you don't listen it shows that you don't give a fuck that you think you know everything and you don't get anywhere by that because your partner will resent you for not respecting them enough just to listen because when you listen you can learn how to meet the needs of others and the relationship that you're with and relationships are all about service so it's like if you don't know how to properly serve your mate then you don't need to be with them because you can't make them happy and I don't say that in like a selfish way, like, oh yeah, my husband, my boyfriend, whoever, like you're my servant, you know, it's not like that. It's just knowing your love language and knowing how to approach them in all different types of situations and circumstances. So don't take your partner for granted by not listening. Learn about them and apply. Um, the next one would be not looking at yourself. When you're not able to look at yourself in a relationship it just shows that you're all in your ego so you need to be willing to look at yourself and see what you are actually doing how you're operating because your partner is a reflection of you your partner is mirroring back to you maybe what you need to do maybe what you need to improve um, your partner is telling you you know how they feel and how they feel is a reflection of how maybe you're coming across and most of the time it is that way because everybody around us is a reflection of ourselves um, based on the energy that we're receiving from them. So this one, what's done in the dark always comes to the light. This was actually one of the lyrics that I put into my most recent song called You Think You the Man. And I say, what's done in the dark always comes to light. I can think of so many scenarios in my life personally where there were things that were done in the dark and it came to the light because I shed light on it. And because at some point, you just can't suppress and hide the truth. So, um, what's done in the dark, it always will come to the light. So, you might as well not even fucking do shit behind, 
your partner's back because somehow, some way, and especially in 2018, with the way the technology is set up these days, your partner will find out and your ass will be grass. Oh, it. So, um, yeah, it's when the dark always comes to light. Um, this next one is overindulging in bad activities, living two lives, or in secrecy. So, you know, people have different things that they're into. Some like, you know, whatever it is that they like. And too much of anything is not a good thing. And so when you overindulge in bad activities, it affects your relationship. So you want to be mindful to not overindulge and you want to be mindful to um, not live two different lives you know let your partner know like uh, this is going on in this part of my world or this is something that I've been a part of you know before I entered my relationship I was a part of a whole different type of world and I let my partner know that in the way beginning because I was like I'm not about to hide this and have this as a secret because first and foremost, I want my relationship to work and I don't want to disrespect my partner by keeping something so big about my life from them just to protect their feelings, just to protect the fact that I have a chance at love. You know, it's like you have to be able to love me here in order to love me anywhere else. So I'm not going to start this off with lying. I'm going to start this off with telling you the truth of the matter. And, um, you know... Sometimes people can't handle that truth, you know, but it's all about living in integrity and just coming correct, you know, like just being open and honest, not living in secrecy. And, um, and yeah, so. Okay, and we're back. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, okay, where were we? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, uh. Um, all right, the next one, you guys, huge, and it's something that I'm not even motherfucking capable of because of the way that I am set up inside, okay? Suppression. Suppression rather than expression, and suppression equals depression. Do not suppress your emotions when you're in a fucking relationship, okay? Like, when I got into my relationship, <laughs> I came from firecracker zone, like, as far as I'm a very passionate person, I express myself. As you guys can see in this video, and I was thinking earlier when I had to, like, literally uh, make room on my phone, um, I'm very calm, you know, like, this is definitely my nature, I'm very, like, laid back and chill, but don't get it twisted like I have another side and I will fucking pop off in two seconds but at the same time I've done a lot of self work hence this channel hence YouTube hence Ralph from Infinite Waters Jen Hillman who inspired me on my journey here and it's changed my life so I'm able to like see through all of this hence why I'm doing a 21 relationship killers video so that we are out of this fucking like normal like way that's not that shouldn't be normal because it's destructive so again I don't know what number we're on but do not suppress your emotions in a relationship talk to your partner the whole point of being in a relationship is to be vulnerable with your partner and to be open with them and so that they can see like wow you're a human being too and wow I can tell you anything and wow I can actually be so fucking happy because you're real and I can just tell you stuff and you'll get it and you'll understand me and even if you think I'm weird like you're weird too because you've done weird shit or whatever and like it's fine so anyways do not suppress yourself okay do not blame your partner do not point the finger what is this like a fucking competition like don't fucking point the finger at your partner that is so disrespectful that is so unloving help your partner support your partner don't place blame on them don't make them the, you know, like you're the victim and they're the problem. Like, no, that's so fucked up to do and don't do that. Abuse. Keep your motherfucking hands to yourself, you stupid ass people who fucking abuse and do shit like that in your relationships. I'm sorry. Like, it's no excuse for it. I went through it. Okay. Like, I went through it a few times. Um, and it's not okay. 
it's really fucked up and it's not okay like I went through it when I was pregnant I went through it when whenever like it just has come up in my journey and it has come up in so many people's journeys it's like the most common thing ever which is really really sad it just shows lack of control and it also shows that people are really hurting and it's never even though it is abuse like it's really never about you the person who is being affected it's about them and how they need to get their fucking shit together and how they need to get fucking help for whatever their issues are which have nothing to do with you there's no excuse for a man or a woman to put their hands on you in a way that is an abusive you know way so, um, I say F you to abuse and F anybody who conducts themselves like this. Do not put up with it. It can mean your very life. It's the number one reason why people, why women die in America from their husbands and boyfriends. And I'm not just blaming the men, like the fucking females do it too. So, um, stop fucking abusing your partners and if you do that you don't deserve them and you need to let them go if you don't know how to respect and treat them and you're only hurting yourself so you know you're only gonna fuck up your own life you're only gonna lose your kids you're only gonna lose your wife you're only gonna lose everything because you have no control go seek help and don't be ashamed to go get some fucking help because that's gonna make you better so don't ever feel like oh woe is me or oh my god I'm fucked up I need to go get help no go get help it's like the best thing that you could do it's the most healthiest thing you could do for your relationship and most importantly for yourself fuck domestic violence that also goes on to my next thing having no emotional control you have to have control over your emotions this was something that was so fucking annoying to me in my relationships I'm like I don't want to have fucking control over my emotions I just want to fucking say what I want to say express what I want to express but it's so important to develop that self-control over your emotions and how do you do that well there's many different ways it just depends on which way format interests you um the way that worked for me was you know self-help personal development mindfulness um you know um just all the things that have helped me on my spiritual journey you know to be more in tune with how i'm feeling and in control of how i'm feeling and how i respond and how i know that nothing is actually personal so i don't need to freak out and i don't need to go crazy and i don't need to lose control so i would say the four agreements and if you guys want to look that up it's a book and um it's a way of life if you apply the four agreements it'll change your life so just check it out but yeah i try to develop having emotional control and not jumping to conclusions not making assumptions and not having expectations and just being in control of your emotions and the way you respond because the way you respond has consequences and whatever you do to respond is what you'll get in return so the next one you have insecurities inside that you won't look at so sometimes in relationships we try to act like we're all put together and oh no i'm not wrong oh no nothing's wrong with me it's all you boo like no like don't be afraid to look at your own insecurities and own up to them. I've done it plenty of fucking times. I've done it like my whole life. I have no shame in like not knowing the answer or not knowing, um, you know, just or just knowing that there are things about me that I'm not secure with. And, you know, and not being afraid or have insecurities you won't look at. Yeah, so basically having insecurities within the relationship, but you won't look at them. I looked at all my insecurities in all my relationships, and I'm like, look, I feel this way about this. And, you know, it's all about communication and talking. So be able to look at yourself. Be able to own up to your insecurities and be able to try to, like, get through them and, like, try to, like, work through them and fix them for yourself and for your relationship. A lack of self-care. All right, so when we get in these relationships, you know, we show up to the date, our eyebrows are on fleek, <laughs> our smile is like nice and bright, we brushed our teeth, we have our makeup on, we have our nails done, we have nice clothes on, we have our hair done, and the guys, oh my god, they look so cool, right? They have on whatever the fuck they wear, they smell good, they are shaved, they have a nice hat, their car is clean, uh, nah, nah. they're on their best behavior, and then when you motherfucking get in this fucking relationship, what happened? Because, oh, my breath's done. Oh, my hair's not done. 
oh, my makeup's never on. Like, you just kind of, like, you get out of your self-care routine because, like, life happens and, like, you know, you're busy, you got the kids, or maybe you're a little bit younger and you're just like, I'm comfortable, like, I don't have to do anything. Or maybe you're older and you feel like, I don't have to do anything. Like, you know, I got my man, mm, he mine, or vice versa. Like, hell, you know me, motherfucking homie-ass people out here want to take what's yours. You got to come correct, okay? You got to still be looking beautiful all the time. No, not all the time. But, you know, like... You just want to really just take care of yourself and really take care of your mind, most importantly. It's not really about the way that you look, okay? Like, it's all about the person and relationships because you can get with somebody who is not very attractive, but their mind and their spirit is so much fun and, like, you know, it just makes up for it. And then you don't even realize it and it doesn't even fucking matter. Like, we just want to be loved, seen, felt, heard, and appreciated and just sharing our experience with somebody. So just um you know self-care you gotta get your rest take a shower brush your teeth you know get your spirit right you know get your vibe right have a life outside of your relationship um you know lack of balance and spirituality if you have a lack of balance and spirituality then your relationship will it can kill it you know um, so you really want to still be connected as much as possible I mean hopefully that's something that whoever's watching this video that that's important to you because um so I'm not speaking like oh be religious and all this stuff but you know just like be connected to yourself be connected to you know the divine universe spirit god whatever you believe in and have balance you know um have a balance so don't overindulge like we had discussed earlier in the video um I put not praying so again like I'm not a religious person but I am a spiritual person and like I believe in prayer I believe in talking to the higher up and praying for what I have. I pray for my husband all the time. I pray for my daughter. I pray for my extended family and I pray for my family and I pray for mankind, the world, like just always praying, showing gratitude. Um, if you don't, you know, it could kill your relationship because your relationship needs to thrive off of spirituality and it needs to thrive off of, you know, that higher force that's going to keep you guys together, that's going to keep the flow, that's going to keep the spirit alive, and that's going to keep the mindfulness, and just all the things that you're applying. You also want to show gratitude, okay? If you don't show gratitude for your partner, they're not going to feel appreciated, they're not going to feel respected or wanted or needed or anything, you know? And it's just going to make them feel like shit, and then they're going to go fucking be over at Bob's house, like, you know? So really just show gratitude for them, you know? and let them know that they matter and that they mean the world to you don't get too comfortable okay this is another thing like motherfuckers get too comfortable in relationships like i had said earlier they stop doing the things that they did in, in the beginning why you think that your partner is just gonna want to look at you uh smell the same way for two more days or you think that your partner finds you attractive when you don't put forth effort, when you don't try to take them out, when you don't try to like be fun, when you don't try to have a conversation, when you just live in the same boring ass routine every single day, like, no, like do not get too comfortable because that's when people will start to like, you know, feel vulnerable and feel like they, their needs aren't being met and then they're going to maybe like high five somebody else. You never know, but it is the truth. Okay. So don't get too comfortable stay on your game not that this is a game but you know stay on your stay on your toes you know like make it fun like this doesn't have to be something that dies out just because you've been with the same person forever like this is an ongoing fun growing type of strong everlasting bond that you develop with a person you know um and then the next one is lack of vulnerability so I'm very vulnerable in my relationships. I'm like, oh my God, this is how I feel. Oh my God, I'm scared. Oh my God, I'm insecure. Oh my God, whatever. Like my partner knows me to a T. But if on the other side, you're not very vulnerable, you're not very expressive. You don't let your partner know what's going on with you, how you're feeling. You suppress everything. It's a relationship killer. You cannot just not be vulnerable. Like a relationship is an opportunity for you to be vulnerable, for you to show up, for you to be a real authentic person and your partner will appreciate you for that so much and they will love you more for that they'll love you more for your mistakes or more for your insecurities because you just seem more real if you have nothing to ever say then it's kind of like okay like you're fucking boring or there's no like character to you there's no spark there's no passion there's no 
you know, wit or just nothing. Like there has to be something that's there. So vulner vulnerability is actually a Hey guys, we're back. Sorry again. I have to keep making room on my phone. So I'm like literally putting the videos on my computer because that is just how we're gonna roll for this particular video. My phone's being weird. And I just put on a little lipstick just for fun to end this video. So we were at, okay. All right, so this particular point in the video touches on something that is totally like widespread and totally like I'm sure a part of everyone's experience or has been at some point and they've been exposed to it whether they're really involved in it or not but it is pornography and so um, this is definitely like a relationship killer because as much as people like to get involved with it, you know, at some point, it really takes away from your relationship. You know, some people may think, oh no, like, pornography, like, spices up our relationship, da 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 And I mean, like, see for yourselves, you know, of course, you know, you can experiment with that if that's what you are interested in doing. But from a long-term aspect, you really have to think about how much um, it really affects your mind and your body and to the point where you may lose interest in your partner, um, you may not be like energized enough for them and have that sexual energy available because you're just totally like watching porn all the time. So, um, I've seen some cases where, like, it was a really big problem, you know, like, the dude, and it's, you know, porn is mainly geared towards men, but I know a lot of females watch it, um, but in most c cases of the male, you know, it really takes them away from their families, it really just kind of, like, absorbs their mind in so many d different ways, and, um, and even for like single guys like coming into relationships it's like if they've spent all their time watching porn then it's like they know they can always get their quick fix they don't realize how much you know if they don't if they're not already aware like how much the porn is like taking over their like mental that they may not be as attracted to their partner or they may not they may not get to live out those fulfilled um, sexual desires or needs within the act because porn is such a like large variety of you know starting from normal like oh here we are just doing it to like literally the highest of the high you can go with it like the most you know craziest things that you could think of basically so porn does affect relationships more negatively in my opinion than positively um, I've been on both sides of the spectrum with that, so I kind of know, um, and I say that it is a relationship killer for pornography, so you may think it's innocent, you may think it's cool and fun, and I get it, but it's also a relationship killer because um, of just like the different effects I've seen happen with it, and you know, just what it's done to so many families and marriages and girlfriends and boyfriends and just across the board. So really pay mind to that um, and, and know that you want to have the creative freedom to express yourself sexually in your relationship and you don't have to rely on porn, which is so unrealistic, which is a lot of the time fake and no, you know, us regular Joes, like our bodies don't look like that. So it really puts us in a category where it's like our self-esteem may get hit you know even from the guy's perspective and it's like you shouldn't have to live out your sexual fantasies through pornography so just pay attention to that you know in your relationships and know that it pretty much is a relationship killer so um the next one i have on here is 
lack of conducting yourself with integrity at all times. So there are moments where we are away from our partners. There are moments where we're on vacation or business trip or whatever may come up and we aren't living in that integrity. We maybe take off our wedding ring, you know, and maybe go out to the club and just kind of pretend like, oh, I'm like single and I don't have anyone here, like, or I don't have anyone in my life. And it's just about always living in integrity no matter what, you know, presenting yourself, whether you're married or in a relationship, at your best, you know, each and every time. It's not to say that you can't interact with the opposite sex, but know where to draw the line. Know how far is too far in the conversation. Know, like, when you're actually entering, like, flirtation or too intimate of, you know, a knowledge or or knowing of, like, your personal relationship or whatever, you know, because people will want to know and pry and spy and speculate and know where they can actually like jump in, you know, if that's their intention anyways. And I'm not saying that's everyone's intention, but you have to be careful um, when you are in a relationship and you have to be mindful of the way that you conduct yourself. So, you know, um, it just brings reproach to yourself and it shows where you are in your love life, in your relationship. So always come from a place of integrity at all times. And so that actually ends the 21 relationship killers, but I also have four more points. So these were just other points that like came up and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to include these as well. So I put no effort in the bedroom, XXX. (laughs) So you really want to make sure, especially like when you are in a long-term commitment that you always, and I had mentioned this before in the video, that you always want to put forth effort you know um don't get lazy don't just get in the same you know routine or same habits because life becomes a routine always enjoy your life always make it fun always make it exciting and you know just keep things alive just like you would you know with anybody new or any new encounter and just put forth effort in the bedroom basically you know um of course come from an authentic place and only do the deed when you are really in the mood and really desiring that part of expression for yourself with your partner um but just keep it fun like you know and and keep the effort going um you also in a relationship because if you don't it's a relationship killer you're just like this is lame this is boring peace out you know you check out mentally physically spiritually um You also want to be, I put not responsible, so it's a relationship killer not to be responsible. The responsibility shouldn't just all solely be on one person. The responsibility should not be um, taken for granted. The responsibility should be shared, you know, and it should be something that is at the forefront of your relationship so that you guys can be successful and so that you guys can manifest and achieve and you know, create this life together that you guys want by being responsible, by, um, you know, just being adults, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And the next one, the third one out of the additional four (laughs) out of 21, but the third one here is cheating. So... I'm not sure. I know there are people out there who stay with their partners who have physically cheated. Um, But I know that for me, like this is definitely a relationship killer. If you physically are like cheated, you know, it's a relationship killer. Like you were intimately involved by choice. It's never an accident. I don't think that the excuses of drugs or you were in the wrong place or you got seduced or you got raped or I mean those are definite cases of crossing over to that side but ultimately I feel like 95% of the time like you have the choice to do that or not and you know once that line of trust is crossed and you do that deed and you cheat on your partner it's a relationship killer you may not ever 
get to have that relationship that you had because you wanted one moment of pleasure or whatever the reason was so if you are in that place I would say you know break up with the person and then go move forward you know don't try to live two lives like I said earlier and like cheat and do all this stuff like you can bring them back some fucking disease or like anything you know it's just very very hurtful um I say break up if you are at the point where you are ready to cheat on your partner like you know because it's a relationship killer cheating and this last one goes out to all the mr know-it-alls um which is just compensation i feel for being like insecure because a person who is comfortable with just being themselves and they don't always have to prove a point they don't always have to come from a place or energy of like competing um it's just showing that you know they're not willing to listen like these are just all kinds of like vibes where you're just like ah, like fucking like kills your relationship over time if not right away depending on the person's patient patience level so you really want to be mindful of all of these things I had on this list here that I was inspired to write just throughout my thoughts, throughout my journey, throughout my experience, and just throughout my knowings and happenings of people and relationships, including myself. So I really hope that you guys liked this video and you guys found value in this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends, share it on your Facebook, share it somewhere where people can, you know, receive the knowledge of real life experience from 21 relationship killers that definitely put your relationship on the edge and in the danger zone um and yeah and if you guys feel the vibe here on my channel if you're new welcome and subscribe if you do um and i look forward to coming out with new videos and if you guys have any comments or questions please leave them in the comments below so I can touch on them and I definitely will. I really look forward to connecting with everybody here on my channel. I'm finally at 200 subscribers and I'm just really excited to like move forward with my YouTube and just give out my truth. And that's what's been kind of like hard. You know, I've been not only living life, but like feeling comfortable enough to like just say the fucking truth, you know, and it's so important to me and it's just so like exhilarating and liberating to just speak my truth and speak my mind so that's exactly what I'm going to do here on my channel and I hope that you guys enjoy it and again I thank you so much for being a part so I look forward to making more videos and seeing you guys soon so take care of yourselves and take care of your relationships and just have fun and enjoy this life because we only get one so peace and love talk to you soon